Howdy, Dan Williams, Survive Outdoors. If you don't know what we do, we do wilderness medicine presentations, some gear reviews, we talk about zoonotic illnesses, tick bites, spider bites, getting injured in the outdoors. What do you do if you're injured? How do you get back as well as prevention? Today, I know the title says water bug bites. That's a little bit of a of a misnomer there. We are going to talk about some bugs and we're going to talk about getting bit and we're talking about getting bit in the water but they're not so much bugs per se. So I've talked before about sea lice and sea lice are nemosis from um, jellyfish and I had a patient and uh, you're going to see in this picture right here and it is of a lady, young lady on her honeymoon and she got stung underneath her uh, bathing suit on the top here. And with these little guys, they hatch out and they get underneath your bathing suit and when they get trapped, they will sting you and that's why you see that line of bites and it's only where your bathing suit is because it gets trapped. So that's what those are. Um, treatment is simple. Uh, usually a steroid and some uh, topical antihistamine as well as antihistamines by mouth. Uh, they don't, these don't itch as much as they burn and hurt. Now, the reason for I'm doing this video is for a couple reasons. I just had a patient a few weeks ago. Her and her husband had a cabin up in Canada and they were fishing and on the last day she was, went for a swim and on the way back, they were driving back from, I think it was, it was north of Thunder Bay. They had about a 12 hour drive heading south and within 10 hours, she is itching intensely. In fact, as soon as she got back home, she brought the luggage in the house, came right to urgent care. And she had bites on her legs, on her arms, and those bites were everywhere her bathing suit was not. So it's just the opposite. So that is called swimmer's itch. And here's a photograph right here of what that looks like. And you see these multiple little bites, almost similar to scabies, similar to flea bites. So what is that? That is a parasite that is called a schistosome that is not schistosomiasis. Now schistosomiasis is a larva that can get into your intestines, into your body, and make you very sick. And right now it's South America, St. Lucia, I believe, uh, Colombia, certain areas in South America. We do not have that in the United States. However, freshwater lakes, West, Northern Wisconsin, Canada, I know uh, Minnesota, a lot of your Northern states, have this schistosome parasite. And what that is, is, is this parasite lives on freshwater snails. And the cycle of that is that the parasite can harbor in raccoons, muskrats, and waterfowl. They did a massive study with this in terms of looking at mergansers, uh, common merganser, red-breasted merganser, hooded mergansers, where these little larvae go into the ducks they live there, the duck poops, and out comes the parasite into their poop, into the water, and then the parasite from the snail, that parasite then gets into the water and bites mammals. Now that parasite cannot get through our skin. It will bite, it is like a, a little fluke, F-L-U-K-E, like a little worm, but it can't really penetrate. But when it bites, then we get an antihistamine reaction. So we get this little red bump and it itches terribly. So like in that picture, she had this on her legs and it happened within the first 12 to 14 hours of her leaving the water. And one of the hallmarks of this, one is the history, um, two is the time that it took to be seen and the symptoms, no burning like the uh, sea lice, but just intense itching. And so we treated her with antihistamines, prednisone, um, some topical creams, clobetazole, and she did great. So important to note because a lot of even people that are wading creeks, uh, fishing, uh, even tubing, 
You could be tubing and you can get this on your legs, your arms, anytime you're in the water. So how do you prevent it? They do make some barrier creams you can use. Uh, also, if you approach a lake and it looks pretty stagnant, probably not a good idea to go in. Or you can wait when the wind is blowing out from the lake, that is the time to go. If, the, if the, uh, you want to go in the water, you're going to be a lot safer that way. So that is the schistosome of swimmer's itch in North America. Why is this becoming right now? So it is actually rather common right now. Over the last five years, I would say, climate warming is definitely part of the issue. It's warming up those lakes above 60 degrees for a longer period of time, and it is becoming more prevalent. So be advised, if you happen to have this, it's easily treatable. You're not going to get sick from it. It's just a pain in the butt, and you can definitely uh, take care of it really on your own. You can do a topical cream, uh, cortisone over-the-counter, some Benadryl, and deal with the itch for a few days, and you'll be fine. I hope this helps clarify it. Sea lice, swimmer's itch, what's the difference? If you have any questions or experiences, throw them down below, and keep your eyes on the rise and your face to the wind. Till next time, guys.